Life is not always fair. Things in life are not always equal. For example, when you're sitting with your little brother and there's two pieces of chocolate cake, one big piece of chocolate cake, one small piece of chocolate cake. Oh, because he's your little brother, he gets the big piece of chocolate cake. And even though it's your birthday, he wants the one with the race car frosting. It was, it was my chocolate cake. It was my birthday. I should have, okay, okay. I'm getting a little off track. But anyway, the point is, things aren't always equal. We're going to be taking a look at inequality. So just as a refresher, when dealing with inequalities, we use this little symbol here that kind of looks like an arrow. And um, what you're going to notice is that this open end always points towards the bigger number and the smaller end, the arrow point, always points towards the smaller number. So if you want, you can picture a little crocodile here. Let's say we've got our little crocodile, Fred and he always wants to eat the biggest number. So you'll see his open mouth always going towards the bigger number. So let's say we had a three and a four. Since four is our bigger number, our crocodile mouth is gonna be open towards the four. And we read this, three is less than four. Let's say we had a, let's say we had a negative 12 and a negative 50. In this case, our negative 12 is bigger, so we'd have the open crocodile mouth towards the negative 12, since negative 50 is smaller, and we'd read this, negative 12 is greater than negative 50. Furthermore, if you see our little arrow symbol with a line underneath it. Now this line underneath it represents that it can be equal to also. So in this case, let's say we had a 5 and a 4 here. We would read this 5 is greater than or equal to 4. So this would be true. Let's say we had a 7 here and a 7 here. In this case we could say 7 is less than or equal to 7. Let's take a look at this problem here. We've got x is greater than 5. This is telling me Whatever x is has to be bigger than 5. So x might be 6, it might be 7, it might be 8, but we've got all kinds of different options here. So if we wanted to represent all our possibilities on a number line, I'm going to give us a number line here. Let's say we've got like a negative 3 over here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 is right here, and then we've got 6, 7, 8 all the way going on and on all the way to infinity. To represent all the numbers that are bigger than 5, well, here's our 5 right here, so we know all these numbers to the right are bigger than 5. So what we do here is we put an open dot here. Since 5 is not bigger than 5, we put an open dot, and we can shade everything to the right. This tells me that all my numbers over here on this side of the 5 on the number line uh, can be values of this x. Okay, here's another one. x is less than or equal to 0. So let's think of all the values of x that are less than or equal to 0. Well, 0 for 1 is less than or equal to 0. So instead of an open dot, I'm going to do a closed dot. I'm just going to shade that in. That means that 0 is a possibility. Now we want all the values less than 0, so that would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, so on and so forth. So we're going to shade everything this time to the left. And now this number line represents all my values that are less than or equal to zero. Now in the English language we have all kinds of words that can represent inequalities. We're very familiar with the greater than symbols and the less than symbols, but let's take a look at some more. Here we have fewer than. Fewer than is actually the same as less than. So if you ever hear fewer than, you want a less than symbol. More than is similar to greater than. That's going to always give you a greater than symbol. Let's take a look at some more interesting ones. Here we have at least. Now if you have at least five, that means you have five or more. So whenever you have at least, this is going to be a greater than or an equal to, at least. Now at most, let's say you had at most five. That means you've got five or less. So this is going to be a less than 
or equal to. Now, whenever you see an exactly, that means it's not an equality. That means it's equal to. We have exactly five. There's only one option, five. These are going to be important terms to remember in setting up inequalities. All right, for your homework, you're going to be taking a look at some real-world scenarios, specifically looking at some graphs and setting up some inequalities to represent some different situations. In this graph here, we have the total amount of money someone makes, y, based on how many computers they sell, x. So all you need to do here is read it like you would any other graph. Let's say you wanted to make more than $8,000. Well, here's your $8,000, so let's go find where we cross our line here. And $8,000, you have to sell five computers. So if you want to make at least $8,000, you would set that up as X is greater than or equal to five computers, right? Because our 8,000 lines up with five computers sold. Now, if you wanted to sell, let's say, at most... You wanted to make at most $10,000. Well, we'd take our $10,000, we'd look here, and that's at about 7.5. Now, you can't sell 7.5, so we'll have to go down to 7. At most, we want to sell is 7 computers. So if we wanted to make 5,000, we'd say X is less than or equal to 7 computers, okay? So you're going to be looking at these graphs, setting up some inequalities, graphing them on a number line, uh, just kind of doing some more work with these.